pretty exciting to actually do a, a physical share of the pods on site. Uh, we've done a few webinars otherwise. Uh, we did another webinar at the High Performer Building in Ellerslie, Auckland, that showed the practical use of keyboard. Um, but yeah, there's nothing quite like being on site and sharing what's going on. So if you ever want to see it installed in situ in a little, a little uh, display, uh, like I mentioned, Ellerslie, Auckland, at the High Performer Building, there's a little display there. Um, good, so how are we placed? Kicking off, Danielle. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. Underway. Nice. Thanks. Oh, exciting. Right. Um, well, I'm Peter from QPod, General Manager. Uh, been with QPod since the inception and design of uh, QPod uh, as a family business, manufactured in Hawke's Bay. Um, so just recently, we launched our Codemark uh, QPod to run it a slightly different fashion from the typical Raft Foundation, and that was to uh, reduce those the, the steel and the concrete out of out of those typical ribs in a raft foundation and then we launched the continuous system so so with me today i've got cam here from origin homes so cam congratulations for being the first user of the keyboard continuous system as a code marked system so we've had a few continuous jobs down but they've been all engineered jobs um, so this is the first one that's actually flown through council we had the inspections this morning and they've just gone all the ticks nice work all right so big big shout out to origin homes um, they've been with qpod for three years now probably plus and and loving it so tell us why you just love qpod so much yeah um well it just makes sense to us really it's fast easy to put down um, goes through the council. We use a code mark system, so yeah. it's quick, no arguments. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's consistent. That's probably the biggest thing. We can price it. Nice. Yeah. Know what the demand's going to be. Yeah. And it's easy to work with. You've been using Qpod Raft for a while. So the difference going from Raft to continuous here. What's, What's your biggest findings? Cost savings, less concrete, less steel, and quicker to put down. Nice. Yeah. It'll be faster again now that we've done this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the first one's always a few learning curves, like you said in the first hour or so you're learning, weren't you? Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're going to nice. see. Cool. Right. Special yeah. thanks to Origin Homes. We've got a bit of an unveiling here. So come and have a look at this. What have we got under here? One guess. Oh. Code Mark <laughs> Celebratory Cake. Yeah. You never have guessed that. First Code Mark <laughs> Slab. We're going to celebrate, celebrate it with a cake. cake. So, so thanks, thanks Origin Homes. homes. <laughs> thanks. Take yeah, that yeah, back to the team. Enjoy, Enjoy it. it. Slice it up. Appreciate <laughs> your support. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Cam. That's all. I'm just going to dive through now and look into some of these elements. I'll let Cam go on his busy day. He's got a lot to do. Um, we'll just dive into here. Thank you. Let's go. Cheers, Cam. All right. So that's. Super, Super exciting, exciting for us and, and really pumped with Origin Homes and what they're doing with QPod, um, loving their support. And yeah, big, big thanks, thanks to all the other builders out there who are loving QPod, QPod already. Let's dive into the continuous and have a little look at the components typically found in a continuous slab. So here you can see behind me the continuous configuration of the pods. They run continuously. We've got no ribs. Um, you can see when you come to the edge like this, you've got your adjustment using the QPod extenders. So these come in 100 mil increments, and that creates your adjustment from the typical 550 millimeter pod. On the sides of the QPod continuous, you've got a cap. So you've got a cap that caps off the side of the QPod, and you'll see them around the edge. Um, that's a slight difference from the typical raft system, which is pre closed off. In the perimeter here, You'll see down there on the insulation, you'll see the 300 millimeter uh, perimeter beam spaces, and obviously no rib spaces in here, having no ribs. So that's your typical components found in the continuous um, system. As you can see, the um, typical detailing here, we'll go into a little bit more of that as we go along, but you can see just the stability of this mesh and the inbuilt. Uh, 40 mil spacer on the top is your ultimate um, stability of that mesh and, 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 and level, keeping that mesh level. You can see over to my right here, a garage rebate. They haven't quite finished this yet, but they're working on it. So the, the steel is typically bent down. 
Uh, and then you've got some brick rebates in here, showing that typical detail. Over on to uh, some pipe penetrations. There's different ways of uh, creating these penetrations. You can see one here, typically in the perimeter. You've got a toilet waste coming up. Um, you've got your lagging, and then the steel bar bent around, um, keeping its spacing. So your typical um, steel detailing in the perimeter here is one top bar, two bottom bars, H12, and then you've got your mesh on top, SE62. So this is typical of the Codemark um, Foundation. Also with services, um, often get the question around showers and shower rebates. Again, we supply a lowered QPOD that steps down 60 mils, and these are supplied by QPOD as well. Um, you have that steel mesh cut and lapped 300 millimeters. There's other ways of um, putting these services through the pods. You can either cut a hole in the pod and have it come up through it and seal it off. On this site here, in all the cases here, they've just removed the pod or removed the extender um, to put the service up through it. Here again, removing components and putting those services through it. So I, I forgot to mention um, all throughout this webinar, just, just ask any questions in the chat box. Um, check that at the, on the bottom of your screen or on the right. Put those questions in. Danielle will notice them and we'd like to try and answer them live as we go along. So um, Danielle, just shout out if you see those questions come in and um, we'll try to answer them as we go along. So the typical perimeter detail, we've noted that. Um, the three bars, one at the top, two at the bottom, kind of covered off on that. Obviously no ribs, so no rib steel. And then you've got this hockey stick bar at 1100 millimeter in interval. So you have one of them tied under the mesh, uh, basically every, every second pod. And that's just the tying in that footing to the topping. Now, Sam, if we just take that uh, camera over here, we'll go and have a look at some thickenings. So if a question coming up. So can we use quick set form work with QPod? Absolutely we can. Um, I'll dive onto that right now, seeing we're asking the question along here. As you can see on this site, if you have a look down the perimeter there, Sam, We've got a 50 mil uh, base insulation, and I'll give you a few few of the uh, calculations of what sort of R value that's put in out. So that's typically what we do see, and then if you want sidewall insulation, obviously we do have um, the quick set system, which we're working closely with, and this gives you sidewall insulation options. So you've got, here's the quick set taper, and then there's quick set ultra options as well for 140 mil framing. And there's also brick rebate options, and then with that side insulation, you can obviously go ahead and put under slab insulation in there as well and get um, all sorts of brilliant R value outputs. This site here is a standard boxing site, 50 mil under slab, and it's delivering a R value of 1.95 for the site. So it's a, it's a rather large square meter site and it's got an area to perimeter ratio of 2.9. Um, so yeah, achieving R 1.95, it's a massive R value, well above the um, requirements and sending this home in, well into areas of a, a nice, warm, cosy home. Great question. Any more, just, just pop them in as we go. Yes, uh, just while we on R values and insulation, the other question yes. that came up, um, are you using XPS under the entire slab footprint? Yes, so if you just get a broad sweep here, Sam, you can see the XPS starting at the perimeter there and going right through. You can see it through here. But yes, on this side it goes right under. In most cases, we see it going right across the slab. I know the uh, calculations do show that, that that first meter does the most benefit, um, but we're often finding um, Builders putting it right under just, just for the ease of keeping that um, ground level and the installation easy. It does also prove benefit throughout the whole slab. It does add additional R value within the slab to have it right underneath. Good question. 
Thanks, Peter. Um, just on uh, pipe penetrations again, uh, can yep. we see the detail on the waste and remove uh, pod again so I can take photos? <laughs> Certainly, yeah, screenshot. Yeah, have a look at this one. There's a great example right here. Sam, if you just dive down on this, um, get a nice wide view. So you see you've got the um, where that perimeter bar is severed, cut. You've got this um, bent bar around it at the top and the bottom, wrapping around. You can see there's a, a pod's been removed here and some extenders put in. So this has given the bar sufficient room to bend around the pipe. Um, and obviously all those details show the minimum clearances of pipe from boxing, pipe from pod. Um, you've just got to maintain those minimum clearances. Um, like this, you're, you're cutting the uh, forcing as least as possible. But you can see right here, we've got the top reinforcement coming right in line with it, so it's just got to be done. So there's there's a guidance around that, and obviously a 600 millimeter lap of the um, steel on this bent, bent bar here. Another example, you can have a look over here, Sam. Turn your camera over this way. You can see it in the middle of the slab here. So there's a continuous pods running everywhere. And here they've put in these two pipes. They've pulled out the pods, put some extenders in. Um, and then you'll see in the topping on the mesh, you've got these bars, these H H12 bars just tying off um, for where that uh, mesh is cut. So if you're having to cut the top mesh, you need to put these bars in just to um, Bring that reinforcing back. Cool, cool. Any other questions? Just fire them in. We'll carry yeah, on over so here to the thickenings. Sure. Yep, Before we get to the thickenings, um, Heidi just asked as a QS, I always want to know what is the average cost per square meter supplied of the pods? Yep. So, average cost of the square meters for QPod. It's around about 18 to 19 dollars. Obviously, a big variable is where you are building in New Zealand, whether that's central Otago, Northland, um, central of the North Island. It can vary just with the freight logistics. Coupon is a product that stacks up on a pallet, so you get 50 square meters of product on a pallet. Uh, so that does bring that logistics into a really good space. Uh, but yeah, 18 dollars, 19 dollars, up to 22 dollars a meter squared. It's kind of what you'll see with Coupod um, delivered to a site. And that's including, yeah, all the components. So obviously your, your spaces, your um, pods have got the inbuilt bar chair, so there's no need for chairs for there. Um, and your perimeter spaces, your extenders, that's everything included. It's just a meter squared rate you can kind of apply to a building. Where you've got a lot of thickenings in a building, obviously that does bring that meter squared rate down typically. So this is house is a pretty uh, standard standard build, not a lot of thickenings. Um, I think the thickenings they've put in here are more related to getting hold down bolt fixings um, because they were just going for an 85 mil topping on here where they needed some bracing fixings. They've done some thickenings in the slab just to give that hold down bolt uh, something to key into. Um, the alternative to that is to not put thickenings in and go for a hundred millimeter topping. So, like I mentioned, this is a typical thickening detail here. Um, haven't got a whole lot to show you here because it's pretty simple. We've got two bottom bars in there of H12, and then the mesh obviously carries on over top. There's no top bars in there. Your mesh laps as normal. Um, and your pods, you know, they're spaced apart that 300 millimeters. You're stopping the pods, putting a cap on, and then a, a clip on 300 millimeter spacer here. These spaces clip on. The um, H12 sits down on top of these in these li neat little saddles, and everything pins down to the ground really nicely and neatly here. Cool. One thing we notice with the continuous pods. With no ribs, you've always got less accessories in here, less parts, less things moving. And I can walk around here, contractors can walk around here. Yes, I'm probably pretty lightweight, but uh, a heavy contractor can walk around on here with no troubles at all. They're stable, and that's what we're finding contractors love about the continuous system as well, is that extra added stability. 
with the cue pods and moving around on them. So cool, that kind of covers off most of the standard elements of a cue pod continuous slab. Um, we'll just dive on back to the uh, where we started there, Sam. We'll have a look at some of the other points that I wanted to cover off about the site in particular. While we're traveling along, you can see here the, the uh, re-entrant corner bars. Um, so these are placed in the topping of the mesh uh, when a, when a, when it, wherever there's not a saw cut. So if there's a saw cut possibly in this corner here, we might have a saw cut running out from here across. So there's when there's a saw cut, we don't need these corner bars. The, the Q pod. Yep, yep. So good. So good point to cover off there, Sam. Just reminded me. The Q pod obviously is 100% recycled plastic manufactured in Hawke's Bay. Um, so we we do source all our plastics from New Zealand and offshore of recycled plastics. Um, and people often ask, is it recyclable? Yes, it's 100% recyclable. Um, but also we find with contractors, if you have a scan around, Sam, there is nothing left to recycle. He's got some pods on the back of the trailer there, excess to the job, they'll go on to the next job. There's nothing needing to be thrown out. It can all be repurposed. No off cuts, no cutting. Um, so yeah, it makes life really easy. Cool, so a few other features we might see on a, a more complicated build um, is such as free joints, um, wing walls, uh, step downs. There are all other um, detailing which is available in the keyboard code mark. Um, and those free joints are typically put in when you've got a narrow corridor in a, in a building design or a, a length of a slab that's over 30 meters long. Uh, typically we saw those, see those sort of details. So that's Hi, about, um, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, we've got another question here. Uh, what li what li liquefaction technical category is this site and how would it change to TC2 or above? Would it need the ribs? Yeah. yeah, good question. Yeah, so this is uh, typically what we'd call a good ground site here um, with, with 300 kPa and little, little liquefaction or no little uh, liquefaction risk. So it's within that good ground um, parameters. Um, that's where the code mark QPOD continuous kind of sits. As soon as we've got liquefaction issues or expansivity issues, it dives us into TC2 category. Um, that's when we'd typically go to a raft foundation, those ribs giving it greater stability um, and giving that better shear strength factor. Um, so we see a lot of our SED jobs, yeah, they would all be raft having those ribs at 1200 centers. Yep. So this is purely for your good ground sites, your sites where you've got um, you're down to 200 kPa, but the uh, little liquefaction and uh, little expansivity risk. Any other questions come in there, Danielle, before we um, wrap up? Um Yes, hi. Uh, so we've got another one question here. Um, how do you handle step downs in this lab? Yep, step downs. Yep, so we, there's a typical detailing for that. I haven't got it right in front of me, nor have I got an example here. But um, you can go to a maximum of 600 millimetres for a step down. Um, and that's typically done with either um, a block masonry build up or a concrete cast in place. Uh, the steel detailing for each is very similar, just tying those two uh, footings into each other. Uh, that detailing, those three variations of that detailing are available with the code mark manual. Um, I think following this webinar too, uh, we'll be sending out some resources. So that code mark manual will be part of that, just relating to what we've seen today. And you'll see in there, um, partway through the book, those, those options there. Wing walls is another one too, which I touched on. Um, so we're seeing a lot of designs now uh, with wing walls coming out the corners, like you know, typically here at the end of a, a, a gable. Um, those wing walls can be done with the keyboard code mark. They're maximumed out at 1200 millimeters. So you can come out 1200 
and then obviously a minimum of 150 millimeters thick so just to give that room for the steel in there and the the uh, stirrups that go within it um, so we're seeing that detail a lot as well good so that's probably covers off our webinar for today i'm not sure danielle have you got some some more questions we can cover off before we finish no this is it for now yep nice well thank you everyone for joining uh, it's been a terrific opportunity to show everyone on site what actually happens with the q pod um, how it practically works together you can actually see here some of the pods that came to site um, and just how they come delivered so you can see here we've got one the lightweight um, and they come delivered as a group of four so you just pick them up like this and put them down on the site and you're clipping them together so practically it's a it's an easy system to clip together and so this is this is the way the contractors will kind of deal with it typically on a site come to um to an edge or a perimeter where you wanted to make a adjustment um you can simply break them apart like such and create your adjustment some caps on here or extenders and create your variation in the site perfect well thank you all again for joining today big shout out again to origin homes been a great supporter of Cupid for a long time now um, along with you yeah, all those other builders some on today and and many others that love that love the Cupid experience thank you I think we'll be sending out a recording too following this just piecing it all together and sharing it with those that couldn't go out work um, on a Friday. Obviously a bit of an odd time of the day. We we're kind of limited by what was going on here and, and, and getting the pods in. The concrete's getting poured on Monday, so we had a narrow window of opportunity. We just wanted to take it, share it with everyone. Thanks for jumping on.